Welcome to Director Tech Talk. I'm James Weingard, the director of Rice Lake Community Media, and uh, on the other in the other box over here is the director for Trempolo County uh, WTCO, and that's Derek Westby. Hi, Derek. Hi, James. How are you? I am well. And uh, look, we get to talk tech again today. We sure do. And uh, first, we're going to talk about smart devices and you know we're, we're kind of in this age where it's just kind of ubiquitous where we have you know smartphones and you know smart plugs and Alexa and uh, Google Home and all this other stuff and we're going to kind of touch on some of those today. Um, let's start off by talking a little bit about smartphones and I know you have some history for us. Yeah, so the first actual smartphone was released by IBM in 1994. So it was called the Simon Personal Communicator. Um, and it was revolutionary at the time. It, was, uh, it could take phone calls, like a cell phone, but it could also receive faxes and emails. Um, but then it also had a built-in calendar, an address book, um, and appointment scheduler, which in 1994, that was huge. Um, now. Of course, these were very expensive back then, like cell phones were, but um, it was revolutionary and that really kicked off the whole uh, portable battery-operated computer device um, world. Um, but the, fir the first like real touchscreen smartphone like what we're familiar with now, that didn't come out until 2007 with the first iPhone. So I, I know you like iPhones, so. Well, I I flip back and forth between uh, Android and, and Apple, but um, the the Simon what you were talking about that is kind of the precursor to like Blackberries and and that sort of stuff, right? Yeah, because there was a, a whole bunch of devices came out around a, a little after there, um, like the Palm Pilot, um, and 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 then that then the BlackBerry, and then just a, a cell phone that was smarter than a normal cell phone, but not a full smartphone where you could access the very crude internet on your phone. Um, and that was around 2004 that that stuff came out. But it, it wasn't, it really didn't catch on as a, you know, as the, the smartphones we know and love uh, until 2007 when the iPhone came out. Right, and then it just took off from there and now what, 14 years later, almost 15 years later, look at look at where we are. You know, you've got all the different companies that, that make the phones, Samsung and LG and uh, Motorola and Apple, of course, and probably other ones that I'm, I'm forgetting, but um, it's, it's really remarkable kind of where we've been and where we have gone in such a short amount of time, relatively short amount of time. Yeah, I mean it's it's amazing to think that in you know in the '70s computers were took up an entire room, uh, down to now my my watch tells me my heart rate and reads my text messages and all that kind of stuff. So it's amazing how far we've come in in such a short amount of time. I mean humans have been around forever, well not forever, but you know a, a really long time. Um, so n now that we're developing all this amazing technology, you know, like smart watches and smart devices. It's 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 pretty interesting to see how far it's come in such a short amount of time. So you mentioned watches and things like that. Let's let's kind of shift away uh, from phones uh, themselves, uh, if we could, and get into some of the ideas, other ideas of uh, smart technology and. There are so many different things out there right now. Uh, you know, you, you mentioned watches and things like that, and you know, I've got one, and you've got one, and probably just about everybody else has one. Um, it'd be interesting to know kind of what the the market penetration is when it comes to smartwatches, whether it's an Apple Watch or you know any of the variety of Samsungs or Fitbit or whatever. Um, talk a little bit about those uh, the smart devices, the wearables, if you would. Well, smartwatches actually came out before the first actual smartphone. So the first smartwatch was the um, Microsoft Spot, which uh, was a smartwatch that didn't sync to your phone, but had um, weather and that kind of stuff that it just picked up on. 
Um, and that came out in 2004. So now, you know, what is it? How many, how many years ago was 2004? Qu quite a few. 17. 17. You're, you're the math expert here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so 17 years later, now we're doing smart everything. I mean, you're wearing smart headphones, basically. They're Bluetooth. Uh, I have a smart watch. You have a smart watch. Um, my mother-in-law has smart light bulbs. I mean, it, it's amazing at what you can do once this technology really started taking off. So specific to watches, there's the, you know, the Apple Watch, there's the Samsung Fit, which is what I have. Uh, there's a whole bunch of other ones. There's a Fitbit, there's uh, whatever brand yours is. I'm not, that, Mine's is that a, a Samsung? Uh, Samsung Galaxy uh, Active 2. Okay. Um, then there's also some generic ones. Before, before my Samsung Fit, I had a generic one that I bought off of Amazon for like 30 bucks and it worked, worked pretty well. But um, it's amazing to see the huge market of smartwatches that you can buy and they range you know, in all sorts of price ranges. It's, it's just f phenomenal because you can pick what you want. And you, and you can find things that have the, the features and the, and the, the uh, functionality that you want because you know not everybody needs to be able to uh, to check their you know answer phone calls on their on their wrist like James Bond or Star Trek or something like that or uh, you know track your steps although you know that's I think something else that we'll talk about after a bit is kind of the the functionality of the uh, you know the activity levels of, of people you know because now we're getting into they can monitor blood pressure and blood sugar and pulse and you know so on and so on and so on so uh, yeah I, I, I agree that, that there are smart devices for pretty much any level that, that you could be if you want a $30 one I'm sure there's functionality for that and if you want a $5,000 one, I'm sure there's functionality for that too. Yeah, absolutely. And to touch on, you know, the fitness bit of, of smart devices now, um, my watch tells me my heart rate, how many steps I have, how much sleep I got. It, it, it's, it's just amazing how much you can track on just your watch. Um, and, you know, there, there's so much more uh, that you can do with smart devices. Like now they have smart scales where it tracks your weight loss or weight gain. Um, there's a uh, smart watch, obviously. There's smart video games that track, you know, like, like the Wii Fit. And uh, I know that Xbox had some of that kind of stuff. I'm, I'm sure they all do. They all have some sort of fitness games. Um, although they're not really games, they're like fitness routines that is interactive with your TV. Um, and then one thing that they also have that's kind of interesting is they have smart water bottles where the water bottle will tell you how much water you drank and it will remind you you're not drinking enough water drink more water um, and that that's just a, a crazy concept you know going from you know 100 years ago we were drinking out of a bucket down a hole uh, to a bottle telling you you're not drinking enough water <laughs> do we get this is an opinion question, I guess, but do you, do you think we get to a point uh, you, sooner, later, whatever, uh, where that sort of stuff overwhelms our lives? I mean, you know, when, when you've got a, a, a plastic bottle or a glass bottle or whatever it is sitting in your, you know, drink holder in your car or something like that, and all of a sudden it starts beeping or yelling and screaming at you that, hey, you haven't paid enough attention to me. Um, doesn't that get to be a bit much? Well, I think we're already starting to get to the point where we rely on technology for everything. I mean, even just this show, you know, I have multiple devices in front of me just to do the show. I have my laptop, I have a camera, I have a little screen, I've got uh, remote Zoom equipment, I've got, you know, everything right in front of me. and. Um, and you have a whole bunch right on the other side of you. And we're relying so much on all this smart technology. I mean, we've got smart calendars. How many, I mean, 
do you know what you're doing tomorrow without looking at your phone calendar? It, Why, yes, I all, do, because I have, uh, I have a hard copy of my calendar printed on my desk over there, well, which you saw. Right, but that was only because you were transferring from one type of email to the other. But before that, you would have to check your, your phone or your computer or, or any of that stuff because we rely so much on our smart devices, our computers, our, our watches. I mean, my watch, uh, if I slide over two screens, it tells me that I'm supposed to be doing this show. Um, it tells me the weather outside. When I, when I wake up in the morning, I check the weather on my phone to determine, do I grab my sweater when I leave or do I grab a coat or an umbrella? Or, I mean, these are all things that our smart devices have done for us where we no longer have to sit and wait on, to watch the weather on the news in the morning um, because we can just look at it on our phones. And yet, here I have vintage 1600s technology and a pad of paper in front of me. Well... Some people have different preferences because <laughs> all of my notes are in front of me in a Google document <laughs> on a computer. So, um, you know, there's, there's a whole lot that technology has taken over. And if you just look at like the Gen Zers where they're, um, they're constantly using their phones. They don't, I, I, I don't think they know how to use paper anymore at this point. <laughs> Well, and that's something that we've heard quite a bit recently is that, you know, they, some schools, I don't know if all schools, but some schools, they, you know, they don't teach cursive. So, you know, if, if you and I wanted to write a, uh, a coded message between us, all we'd have to do is write it in cursive and kids wouldn't know. Necessarily. And the other part of it that I always find interesting is, you know, when you put a rotary dial phone in front of a 10-year-old, they look at it and they're like, uh, where's the screen? Well, there is none. Well, at, at this point, you can just put a landline phone in front of them. And they've, I, I don't think my son has ever seen a, an actual landline phone because we haven't had one in his entire lifetime. You know, I haven't had a landline phone since I was in high school. You know, what, my house got rid of it because we all had cell phones. So now that everybody's so reliant on cell phones, I don't think kids are even seeing regular phones as much anymore. Right. Yeah. I mean, you know, I had a uh, the the big tan desk phone until I got the uh, the uh, new phone system here at, at, at my station, and uh, you know, it had the you know the big bell on it and the push buttons and everything, and it's like you know. It, it's it's great, and now we move forward, and you know you get to see who's calling you, and you know we can do video calls and video chats and all this sort of stuff. But um, one other opinion question I'm going to ask, and then we'll move on to some other devices. Uh, you know, and maybe this is me being an old fuddy duddy or whatever, but do it's it seems to me that people, you know, and maybe even younger people maybe not more so, but, but certainly as much. You know, if they've got their nose in their phone all the time and, and watching YouTube or watching TikTok or watching, you know, or playing games or, or whatever it is that they're doing, the art of conversation kind of has been lost with technology, has it not? I would agree. Um, I mean, that's not necessarily always a bad thing because through technology, we stay more connected. So, um, like, for example, we're, we live an hour and a half apart from each other or so. Or so. And, but we, we, we text and chat all the time about, you know, this and that, or, hey, can you come help me with this, or can I come help you with that, or, you know, that kind of stuff. And through technology, we're staying more connected. You know, Facebook, you know everything your friends do and eat and, and that, kind of, <laughs> that kind of stuff. So, I mean... We're more connected, sometimes too connected, but then we also have the issue of, are we connected to the person that we're with? You know, um, are we all sitting on a couch, nose in our, our phones? Um, and, and yeah, a lot of people just do that. A, a lot of younger kids, they get together with their friends and they, uh, like for example, uh, one, of, one of our mutual friends, he's a, a Gen Z or when, 
his friends all got together, they would all bring their own game system over to his house and they would set it up on multiple TVs throughout his entire house. But they'd all be playing the same game together, just on different devices in different rooms. So that does, yeah. And that's one of my, I think, one of my big frustrations is, you know, I go and see a friend or something like that who I haven't seen in, you know, months or weeks or, or years or whatever. And, you know, they've got mom and the dad and, and kids or, or whatever. And, and, you know, all everybody in the room is on Facebook or on whatever Instagram or, or whatever they happen to be. And I'm like, I'm fairly certain that I didn't come all this way just to, you know, sit and look at the back of your phone, but I digress. Um, so as we move on, uh, you know, there are other uh, smart devices, of course, and, and things being, being changed on a routine basis. And, uh, you know, one of the things that I actually rather enjoy now is uh, my Alexa, uh, uh, you know, the puck that sits in, in my bedroom. And so much like you, I think, when you, you said earlier that you wake up and you check your weather on the phone, I say, hey, Alexa, what's the weather going to be today? I, sh I probably shouldn't say that because now I can, <laughs> I can see Alexa's going off all over the state because I, j <laughs> I just said that. But anyway, <laughs> that's, th that's what I do in the morning. Well, now that you said that, everybody watching will know what the weather is today. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. I mean, there's so much as far as home automation now um, that you can all do through your, your Alexa or your Google Nest or your you know, Google Home or whatever uh, puck or cone or whatever you have that can control your entire house. Um, I mean, there's smart light bulbs where you can tell them to turn on and off, you can tell them to change their color. Uh, there's smart televisions. You can say, you know, uh, turn on Roku, living room Roku TV and select Netflix, and it'll go to, you know, whatever you want. Uh, there's smart refrigerators now where you could be at the grocery store and log into your refrigerator and see what's in your fridge and go, oh, right, I needed, you know, butter. Um, it, it's just amazing. Smart locks and smart therm thermostats and all of that stuff. Smart vacuums. Well, I was just going to point that out because I have a, a iRobot a vacuum. And uh, uh, it's funny because I, I don't know if it's necessarily the way that the company intended it. But when you get one and you set up the app on your phone or whatever, um, it actually requires you to name your, your vacuum. So mine, for purposes of, I, I'm not even sure why I named him this, but he, my, my robot vacuum is called Rufus. Okay. So, you know, when I'm here at the station or I go somewhere, I can pull my phone out, turn the app on, and, and Rufus does his thing and cleans up my floors, my hardwood floors in my house. And, and I come home and I got a nice clean floor. And, and, uh, and then I get sent a map of where Rufus has, has been around my house and, and tells me, well, you know, in this particular area, you've had, uh, you know, a few more crumbs that ended up on the floor. And, and so Rufus spent a little more time on that. And uh, it, it's really, you know, very, it, it, it's mind blowing to me how, how far and how amazing, and I suppose to a certain degree, a lesser degree, uh, maybe even slightly scary stuff has become uh, in the last, you know, as we say, 10, 15, 20 years. Well, and talking about scary, now you can also secure your house with smart devices too, with smart cameras and that kind of stuff. Um, there's a lot of people who are catching, you know, porch pirates on their porch with their doorbell, because their doorbell has a camera in it and it goes, motion detected at your front door and you open the app and you see it you see the person there and you can push a button and say what are you doing get away from my you know i see you and then they take off running so and, and you can get ones with like floodlights that you put on your garage or in your backyard i mean you can get them for inside your house inside your office and it's amazing the range in price on those things now um now they have them as low as like 20 something dollars. It's crazy. Uh, all the way up to, you know, thousands upon thousands if you, if you want 
different types, but to, to protect yourself now you have smart devices. It's, it's crazy. Right, yeah, and I see you know the videos on YouTube and where people uh, have their doorbells uh, uh, wired up and and you know as as you mentioned you know porch pirates coming up and stealing packages and uh, you know they, they they get on the on the speaker or um, you know in a I think some other ones for pets you know they set up a camera inside their house and you know watch their you know, watch your dogs, watch your cats, and see what they do during the course of the day. Or I know some parents have set up uh, have set up uh, cameras in the house for when kids are home in the afternoon after school, and you know they may not get home till five or six o'clock, and watch what the kids are up to. Well, back back to the pets one. Now they have ones where you basically can have a Zoom call with your dog, and if you click a button, it drops a treat. So I mean, you you can even you can even interact with your pet and feed them treats from from work or on vacation or whatever. Um, and they also have like smart pet food dishes now. Um, I saw one where you put a collar on your cat or dog, and it it's a it's a closed container that when they get up to it, their collar is like a you know a key fob where you go boop. And the, the bowl opens, they can eat their food and closes, but then another cat can't get in there. So if you have two cats, you have two collars and two bowls, and you can, so you can like portion control your pets um, or water or, you know, any of that kind of stuff. It's, it's crazy. Yeah, it's, it's really amazing. And then, you know, you get into the, uh, I, I know the phrase. I'm not exactly sure, uh, or entirely sure exactly what it does. But you know, you get into the Internet of Things and all that. And I think that's part of talking about what you know what you were talking about earlier with the, you know, the smart uh, refrigerators and, and looking into it with the camera and the video monitor on the on the front of the refrigerator. And you know, years ago, people were all up in arms when. You know, you would get a television on the front of your refrigerator. Well, now you've got cameras and it connects to everything and say, uh, you need cheese, you need milk, you need whatever. Yeah, and I mean, e even back to just television, your TV is smart now. You know, you can Chromecast right from your, your phone to your TV. Um, if you have cable, your cable box is constantly telling uh, Nielsen what you're watching. So n th gone are the days where Nielsen reports send you the little th you know piece of paper you fill out because they're just pulling it straight from your cable box. You know because they're yep. internet connected devices that are intelligent. You don't need the box anymore. Nope. All right. Well, this was fascinating. This was uh, really uh, an interesting discussion about uh, smart devices and smartphones and anything else you want to talk about? Well, I think we've covered quite a bit about smart devices. Um, there, there's just so much you can do with them. There is. And, you know, we'll, uh, we'll keep our eyes open as to where the future of these devices go. And, uh, you know, as, as uh, we say, we just kind of hold on to the back of the train and hold on for the ride. Absolutely. Very good. So that is this edition of Director Tech Talk from Rice Lake Community Media. I am James Wangard. And from WTCO Trumpelow County, I am Derek Westby. And we will see you next time on Director Tech Talk.